Tis the season to be picky. Come check out our newly released winter and holiday collection over on Creator Inc. These include a ceramic mug featuring a cozy Bernie and penguin, a super soft fleece blanket, and three penguin themed ceramic ornaments. All artwork for these items has been done by the delightful Bobby Big Potatoes, the original artist of the Picky Penguin, who I'm so thrilled to have working with us. Just like the desk pad and notebook, these items are made to order and will ship to you shortly after ordering. We spent a long time putting these designs together, and I know you penguins will love these items just as much as we enjoy creating them. Check the link in the description or YouTube's merch shelf and order yours today. Previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. I stand steadfastly at your side as always, Mr. Naruhoto. Thanks, Mr. Susito. That's why I love you. Damn it, now I need my own little Susito. <laughs> Damn it! The torch has been passed, but now I have to find a torch to pass for myself! Damn it all! Maya, get over here! <laughs> okay, I'm here now, suddenly. I'll have to make do with you, even if it means breaking up the timeline. Yeah, that's alright, nobody gives a shit by this point anyway. Go get him, Nick! It's okay. Whatever. And now back to legging it, people. Hello. Sneako B. Back with some more of the Great S Attorney 2 Resolve. When we last left off, turned out it was freaking Dally Vigil all along. He was that big lip bitch. <laughs> and uh, turns out he was seemingly uh, responsible or one of the people responsible for uh, letting Asogi's father go get free. And oh shit, man, oh shit. But the question now is, how does the case that's happening specifically now tie into that? Because right now, that, that seemingly, like, that was an important detail, but for probably the greater scope of the case, but in terms of Gregson and his death, how does that really tie in, right? Um, Asogi seems to believe it, it, it does in some way, but it's not exactly clear yet. That seems pretty, pretty separate. Like, it involves Dally Vigil, who is, uh, involved in some way with what happened with Gregson, but does what happened uh, to him before, how he lost his job, how does that tie into Gregson's own death here, right? And who actually killed him? Uh, not sure yet. But there was something you guys point out to me that actually did not occur to me. That didn't. That was actually something that was also revealed in that that breakdown of Dally Vigils that I didn't realize when I saw that scene initially, as well as a few other things. Uh, and someone who did that was uh, Mazada, who last episode said, so when you think about it, Vigil's trauma and how Asogi and Ryunosuke go about getting him to admit the truth is reminiscent of removing psyche locks, specifically black psyche locks. If you remember in Dual Destinies, it said that black psyche locks occur when the person isn't aware that they're hiding something and that forcibly removing them causes emotional and spiritual damage. In Vigil's case, the trauma from his attempted suicide resulted in forgetting that he was dismissed from his position rather than leaving of his own will. Asogi and Ryanosuke both keep pressing him to remember, and they are, in a way, forcibly removing black psyche locks. Damn. Damn. Wow. You're you're right. For one, the that is a, a really good point. I, I think you uh, might be onto something there, because that's kind of what happened with Athena in a lot of ways, too. Um, and they... Yeah, they, they kind of forced that shit open. I'm, I'm hoping that we didn't just completely destroy this guy. Like, this guy is just now, like, like a husk of a man. I don't know. I'm hoping he can, like, re mentally recover after that. Because that was pretty bad. That was, like, we dug our way to the truth. But it wasn't even just, like, a Soki. I mean, it technically was also Naruhoto as well. And me, because I made the decision. However, the, the thing that you also brought up that I did not gleam the first time I saw the cutscene was the suicide attempt. That, when I read that, I went, huh? First, I was actually, like, worried that you, like, spoiled me on something. I was like, like, wait, is this thing I was going to explain later that hadn't been revealed yet? But then I saw a couple other comments that said the same thing, and I was like, did I miss something from this? And I went back and rewatched it. It is subtle, but it is there. Um, and it's in the scene when he is uh, saying to himself that his life is over. He faces the window in uh, the governor's office and then seemingly very quickly like moves towards it, right? Like you're in his perspective and he moves towards it. And then suddenly you just see glass shatter and it returns to him showing that he tried to kill himself by leaping out the window. I see. Oh, wow. Wow. So cool, man. I mean, so, so sad, but it's so like the actual shot of that, that, that was, that was definitely not like a, wow, that game should could have explained that better. No, 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 no. That was, that was really pretty brilliantly told um a very subtle way of of suggesting it definitely not like in your face which i can appreciate and i also feel like i don't know if maybe they had they had too many instances of people trying to kill themselves in the game it might uh up the rating some too 
Uh, we already had the uh, Mrs. Miss Green who uh, tried to kill herself with the poison. Now this guy. But damn, man. Damn. That was a powerful scene, too. But Mazada, thank you so much for your uh, enlightening comment and on both the, the black psyche locks and also the suicide. Uh, that really, god damn, it makes us even better. It's like, holy crap. Let's just hope that he's not uh, completely fucked from uh, this point forward. Um, and it is for that reason you are comment of the day. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't see what someone say. Apparently, as a as a French native speaker, they were impressed with my <laughs> that I actually managed to. Apparently, I did say it right. Say ça, I think. Yeah, it was actually pronounced right. And I, when I read that, I just like had an inner like yeah, fist pump, like yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I did something right involve, involving French. Really, holy shit! Little victories, little victories. It still doesn't sound great overall, but it's a it's a little thing. At some point, what I really need to do, I re what I really need to do is that I just need to take some just some small lessons in some other languages. Like I can do Spanish okay. English is definitely my best language or my my best accent, aside from you know of course fucking American accent. Um, I like I can do English pretty well. Irish is pretty tough. I'm trying to get a bit better at that. I actually watched some videos on Irish and Scottish. Um, to try to get that a little, a little less jank. Italian's okay. German's definitely a bit better. And, that, and that's because I have actually been taking German, uh, German lessons and stuff. But I think I just need to, like, for French, I just gotta just take some pronunciation, like, classes or apps or whatever, just to get a grasp of it. So I'm not constantly, like, not knowing how shit is pronounced and stuff like what i've sort of learned from french is that a lot of the s's in it are just like silent <laughs> that seems to be the case like a l o r s l it looks like it says allures is actually just uh, allo uh, allo allo i i believe like i don't even know if you pronounce the s maybe not even the r i'm, I'm not sure I, I i looked it up earlier but I, th I think it was like but it was like that and I think that means also or like an addition to. But yeah, it might just be something I should try to do if I if I plan to up my uh, my voicing shit. And that way I don't have to keep getting into French accents and being like, oh God, freaking out. Because let's be honest, all right? A lot of French people show up in a lot of these video games, okay? It's a pretty common language. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so it seems we're really going back to some more investigating. Uh, I am kind of curious. It, it is kind of interesting that we're we're seemingly doing that, I, I guess, because it seemed like uh, the judge was like, well, well I guess we're, we're good to go. And I, I still, while that thing with Dally Vigil happened and the, the trial got concluded, right, for the time being, actually, I guess maybe that's it. It's just simply that we had to indefinitely hold the trial because this shit just got real. But at the same time, it's not like we really gleaned any new information involving Gregson's own death in regards to just Dally Vigil's thing, right? We still don't have any idea who killed him. By the way, I did actually have a thought off off, uh, off stream. Um, I don't know, something potentially that could be where this is going. I, I was thinking, what if it's possible that Ahsoki's father was framed and that the person who was essentially going out and uh, dishing out vigilante justice is actually still out there and that's the one who is uh known as the reaper who's actually doing what uh people are blaming van ziggs for doing right but what if it's the case that it was actually a sogi's father that he was like he was framed for it and then the person that's that was doing it has been alive this whole time who i would think if it was anybody it would be uh strongheart right i kind of hope that isn't the case though i think it's a lot more interesting that if a sogi's father really did do this i think it's way more interesting and engaging than like oh he was innocent you know because the whole idea right is that it is trying to uh find a way to give justice to people who uh manage to evade it right um and i think that's a that's a nice it's a nice moral quandary so i do hope that it was simply if it is the case that there is a continuation of that same idea that asogi's father left behind i hope it i hope it isn't that simply he was never the guy that did that um, but instead, someone is carrying on that legacy. Is actually, you know, carrying on in his name because they believed in what he was doing. But we'll see. I, like, I was always thinking, well, maybe then if it is Strongheart, for example, because I do feel like at the end of this, I, I feel like Strongheart will likely be the main bad guy, right? Um, what if it was Strongheart that came and shot him? We still don't know who actually shot Asugi's father uh, in the graveyard either, right? I don't know. It's just me spitballing potential uh theories and and stuff but the one thing i i would say against this why i actually think that might not be the case though is because gregson 
found evidence that pointed towards Sogi, right? Uh, Sogi's father. Um, so unless he made that mistake or was led astray by somebody else, and maybe this case is him trying to write that, but you know, I don't, that seems a little bit of a stretch. I, I don't, I, I think Gregson is smarter than that, right? That was the case that put him on the map. Um, I don't know, just spitballing. But anyway, uh, investigation part two, let's get started. Oh man, I need some tea after that. I'm gonna put on a Sogi's mask and, and hide my terrible depression after I broke that poor man. November 2nd, 3.38 p.m., home sweet. Okay, I think we, I feel like we might have fucked up a little bit. So can't quite believe what just happened. I know. I inquired with the bailiff after the court session was adjourned. And it seems Mr. Vigil was taken to hospital to recover. Right. Ten years ago now, Mr. Vigil attempted to commit suicide by jumping out the window of the prison governor's office. Okay, so no, they, no, they actually, they, they straight clarified. Okay. But ever since then, he's completely blocked the memory of those events from his mind. Yeah, it makes even more sense, right? Why, why those memories are completely blocked from his mind. Nobody knew his secret, not his family, not even the man himself. But I, I forced it out into the open. Was it wrong of me to do that? Did I overstep the mark? I wonder. Maybe just a little bit. Uh. Bruno! Hello! Oh, Iris. You are miles away. Anyway, I brewed a fresh pot of soothing tea for you. And, oh, damn it. Still not your, I was still waiting for your, uh, your, your theme to pop in, Iris. I feel like we've only heard it, like, maybe once or twice like this game what's happening huh what happened there's used to pop up a lot in the first game oh thank you you and Susie have had an exhausting day so far haven't you oh thank you iris how thoughtful of you do you happen to know where mr holmes is we still gotta do his little uh, rigmarole, right? His dance of deduction, which we didn't get to do yesterday. When we came out of the courtroom back into the defense antechamber, he disappeared. Oh, no, I don't know. He just suddenly sprang to his feet and left. All he said was, I must leave. I wonder if he's pursuing the mystery of Inspector Gregson's death. Well, you know what Holmes is always saying, don't you? There are mysteries in this world that should perhaps never be solved. For the construction of a solution comes only at the expense of the destruction of something else. Hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> That's kind of very closely tied to what we literally just did, right? Sometimes there's things best left unsolved because we kind of broke a man just to get that information. He knows very well that when you open someone else's old wounds, you often open your own too. But he just can't take his own advice and leave well alone. Solving mysteries is too important to him. That's so true. But that's what I like about Holmesy, after all. I suppose that's the lot of a great detective in some ways. So then, let's have tea, and then I'm gonna blast you! <gasps> Wait! No, there it is! Yeah, this is it! Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's Iris' sleeve. I've been waiting for it! All you gotta do is bitch a little bit. I like I like the moment I said that this shit came on. Oh, do you have time, Iris? Yes, I finished this month's manuscript at last. With barely a day to spare before the deadline. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. A brand new story to read in the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. You know, I always hide Holmesy's violin in the days before I have a deadline. You, you do? Poor Mr. Holmes. I'm sure that's very wise, Iris. How sensible of you. What? Why, huh? Now then, my dear fellows, let's make a plan of action before we continue our investigation. I'm a little, what? I, I don't understand. I kind of, I feel like I missed, I missed that. It's right there. What are you talking about? I guess she hasn't done it yet. But also, why? Why, why do you hide it? Wait, huh? A brand new story. I finished this most manuscript, Billy, uh, a day to spare for the deadline. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I feel, like I, I feel like I missed the reason behind that. Yeah, actually, all, everything seems, still seems to have carried over, I guess, from the previous investigation. Seems like within the same chapter, it will carry over, but 
sometimes between chapters it won't because sometimes some of this stuff has just been the same um all right wait I have I presented this to you in a while? I can't remember if I've done that this game. I, I probably have. Ars, have you seen this? My armband. Your armband, the symbol of an events lawyer in Japan. Bruno, you've shown that to me dozens of times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, and my reaction was the same as, as fucking Naruto's where I'm like, wait, have I shown this to you? Oh, have I? Thing is, I just feel wrong if I don't have it on my arm, you know? If I don't ro shove it into somebody's face. Well, if you ask me, I think you should try wearing something different every now and then. Oh, really? Like what? Well, I can make something for you if you like. How about a band that squeezes your arm when the, pers the, when the person you're talking to tells a lie? You're getting ahead of yourself there, Iris. I'll keep a space free on my left arm then. <laughs> this little goopball. Uh, hey, look, hey, look, Iris, it's Grex's dead body. What the? Oh my! <gasps> Did she actually react to it? How about this, Iris? Oh, I didn't see the picture show up on the left. Oh no! What was I thinking? Why on earth did I show her that? Poor Grexy. Oh my God! It actually... Oh God! I did not get a generic. <laughs> wow! Oh, I feel bad now. I, I thought for sure I'd just get like generic response and I'd laugh like, ha ha, I showed you a picture of Grex's dead body and you gave me this hilarious generic response. No. Is it actually all this or? That's not right. I thought you were supposed to say objection or the like when you present evidence. No, it is definitely, uh, objection. no. There we go. Hey, don't say no, listen. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that was great. Right, next. All right, get the message. Someone's not in the mood for looking at things. Wow. It's actually, a, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> that's pretty fucked up, but it's actually a really nice detail that they, they did that. Cause I, that makes sense, right? I'm like, she should be like bummed out about, Gre about Gregson. I actually thought I didn't do it. Cause it, usually you see the item show up in the top left when it's like, they're going to react to something. Right. Um, all right. This morning's trial. So how did it go in court this morning? Uh, where do I even start? Well, we still don't know the truth about what really happened, but one thing's increasingly clear. Lord Van Zix definitely didn't do it. Oh, goody. Yes, that's right. We managed to uncover several new facts as well. Oh, really? And there was another development too. Kazuma. Kazuma. Is that it? Yes, it's quite clear now. I, I miss the I miss uh, Scarlet Studies version where, I, where they called him a, he called him a Sogi instead of Cosmo. Just because I miss that meme, man. I just wish going to Sogi. <laughs> the Cosmo Sama is not himself. The way he's acting, it's almost as if he's possessed. I know. I mean, at the end of the proceedings earlier, it was like a bloodhound the way he was chasing down Mr. Vigil's forgotten past. He's not normally so mercilessly persistent. You sure about that? I mean, to be fair, I kind of also helped uh, him with that. Let's not downplay my own contributions to this shit. I mean, to be fair, though, in this instance, Asogi is uh, very tied to uh, uh, the findings of this case. But I think Sogi's always been this way, even, right? I mean, I mean, we already talked about how, you know, he was already a pretty arrogant guy, right, overall, and he was not above, like, humiliating the uh, the opposing side like he did with uh, Auchi. Um... But even like his like deter like insane determination, right? Like that's something that you've we've already seen like up to this point. He's like, I'm going to to England to change the justice system for good, like like that shit, right? He was saying that at the start of the first game, so it's not really too much different. It's not surprising to see him be this uh, uh, relentless. What's going on in his head? I wonder. I really need to sit down with Cosma and try to understand what he's going through. Yeah, I hope we can do that uh, in this investigation section. The Reaper's innocence. If Gregson was really murdered the day before his body was discovered, then Lord Van Zeeks has to be innocent, you see. What? The day before? Well, that should be easy enough to work out. Just by examining the corpse, surely? Yes, you would expect so. But curiously, no time of death was included in the autopsy report. We gotta go talk to this fucking coroner now, right? I'm almost wondering if that was something that was omitted intentionally, you know? And again, I, 
I keep thinking Strongheart's gonna be the Damon Gant, right? I keep thinking he's gonna come back into this in some way. Hmm, that is curious. I could be totally wrong, by the way. Like, I, I, this game has already done a lot of things to break, break the mold, so to speak, you know? So I, it may not even be the case that Strongheart, Strongheart ends up being a bad guy. Um, but I still think he will be. <laughs> There's still unanswered questions about Lord Van Zeeks, though, aren't there? Ah, uh, do you mean? I mean, what was he doing there on Fresno Street that day in the first place? Well, according to the man's testimony, he said he was investigating Inspector Gregson, didn't he? And it turns out that little room was actually the inspector's secret office. Oh, that sounds like it has all the makings of a wonderfully devilish plot. That Holmes will probably tell me never to publish. But then why was that notice board in there covered in all those particular papers? Papers about cases with a link to the Reaper. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about all this. Oh dear, that sounds more like something horribly devilish. We must start by looking into Inspector Gregson's movements of late. Okay. I never imagined I might have to be investigating an inspector's movements. Yeah, the fact that he has someone dress up like him and basically go and give him an alibi, that seems to be like the, the main reason, right? To, to make it seem like he's in other locations. Like, go over there and make a fuss so people think I was there. That is super weird. Like, what the fuck? What was he doing? What according to, well, according to the entry in his diary, he was carrying on an incognito investigation of the redhead leak the, the day before his death. Oh, you, you mean he was doing the same as Holmesy? Well... Mr. Holmes was trying to apply, whereas the inspector was supposed to be investigating. <laughs> I do wish it had been the other way around. <laughs> I know, right? Anyways, it turns out the inspector who went to investigate the redheaded league that day wasn't actually Gregson at all. It was Mr. Vigil in possession of Gregson's identification. Mm, yeah. So it seems like he was he was trying to conduct an investigation in secret, right? And I'm gonna bet it's it's probably into corruption, right? The corruption within the within the system itself. Something that he definitely wouldn't want his colleagues or higher-ups to catch wind of, right? All the more reason why it's very likely that those higher-ups are responsible for his death. Hmm, you know what that sounds like to me? Establishing an alibi. Hey, hey, Iris, yeah, you got a girl, yeah. Yeah, you know, just get it, Iris. You just like no theories are like crap. Oh my, yes, you're absolutely right, Iris. But why would Gregson need an alibi? It would appear that the inspector had something to do that he wished to keep secret. I don't believe it. I, I always thought he was just a harmless lover of fish and chips. <laughs> Yes, his endless bag of fish and chips. God, I swear, I swear he probably only had like a year left to live anyway, right? With how much he ate those on the daily. But perhaps they were seasoned with something a little more potent than salt and vinegar. Oh shit, a season with a little bit of danger. I think perhaps we should try to move away from food. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, anyway, if Lord Vansix felt the need to investigate Gregson, Yes, I agree. We must try to find out what he know what he knows. Mr. Vigil's fucking dead. Vigil, you say? Isn't that the name of the lady who came to visit Holmesy yesterday? Yeah, I might need to go talk to her too. That's right. To ask Mr. Holmes if he would help her to find her missing husband. Only Mr. Holmes completely passed the buck to us. Actually, can you say Mr. Vigil had been taken to the hospital? Do you know which one? Of course, in my handy dandy little book. Smack! Ah, oh, it's St. Sinners. Oh, that fucking hospital, of course it is. With the dreadful name. I'm starting to wonder if all the hospitals in London have closed. <laughs> it's always it's always this one. This one, and it's giving me the same room that Miss Green was in, too. <laughs> I do find it funny where they kind of poke fun at it. Like, what? Why do we have the same hospital? Why is it always the same uh, juror members? Has absolutely nothing to do with nothing to do at all with budget. No, not at all. That's amazing, Riddle. You found the lady's husband already. Well, I suppose I have by accident. I also broke his spirit, but you know. In ten years ago, while Mr. Vigil was the chief warder at the prison, he was responsible for overseeing the professor's incarceration. No. So when the convict escaped, 
He was held responsible and immediately dismissed. Ugh, sometimes I really don't want to grow up. <laughs> There's more. For 10 years after that, while he was ostensibly working as a peddler, he also had another secret job. He was paid by Gregson to be his stand-in to impersonate the inspector. To impersonate Gregson? But, but why? I have absolutely no idea. That's what we're trying to figure out, Iris. Ugh, Jenny was right. I'm starting to think all adults are up to no good, making trouble in the neighborhood. Including you, Roto! You did it, did you? You got me. Damn it. You'll never take me alive, Iris. Yeah! <laughs> Leap out the window. Blast off. I haven't paid anyone to impersonate me. Come on. Well, I guess technically Caesar kind of did at one point, but that's the sound of the point. That means he has ties to the professor and to Inspector Grexon, though. So I do think we ought to pay a visit to Mr. Vigil, don't you? Back to St. Sinners, then. I don't imagine she's going to be super happy to see us. Well, I think it's clear what we need to do, isn't it? Am I coming too this time? How's the risky, my dear fellows? <gasps> yes. Good. Now she's here. She's got her gun. No one will fuck with us. Oh, Iris, you're even more enthusiastic than usual today. I hope she puts on her funny little outfit. If anyone has anything to hide, my special Wilson shooting eye will set, soon set them straight. I'm going to blast them. That water pistol? Oh, Rudo, this thing shoots up motors, you silly Billy. Okay, wait, what? It's stuff full of piping hot extra special blend of mine. Holy shit. And I'm quite sure it'll be very effective. I'm gonna burn some motherfucker alive. I better be careful not to hide anything. Well, it feels a little strange that Mr. Holmes is nowhere to be seen, but still. I'm sure he'll show up in a clothes hanger, coat rack or something at some point. Let's go and see what we can find out. Yes, together! Away! Okay. Uh, before we do that, before we do that, because I actually have been kind of enjoying this. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna talk to Susto, because I bet you'll have some stuff to say about, uh, Isuki! Are you all right, Mr. Arahoto? It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of our investigations. It's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go 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 far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. I, I must get back to work as soon as possible. Oh. <laughs> That's it? Oh. I, was just, I just wanted... To, okay. I, I just wanted us to, to shoot the shit there. Ah, nothing new about the shovel. No. 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 Huh? Uh, lady secrets, fish tank, and now I think we're all caught up on our goofy running gags. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the chief justice office? Uh, oh, no, we don't want to go to the hotel? You're actually stopping me, game? But I want to go here. Don't want to go look at the window he le left out of? I might glean something. Mr. Vigil's hospital bed. Uh, let's go to, let's go to Lord Strong Dick's fucking office. Oh, God, they're so geek. Uh, November 2nd, British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. No arguments, Prosecutor Sogi. You will continue with the trial exactly as I instructed. Is that clear? Perfectly. It's Kazuma-sama. Defying Lord Strongheart by the sound of it. He never did know when to back down. Hmm. On your way now, Sogi. My lord. Yo, what up? Cosma. Bye. Oh, he left without saying a word. Yo, what up? Yes. What are you doing here? Oh, um, well, um, I was just hoping to ask you a few questions, if you wouldn't mind. I want advance trial concluded today. But Prosecutor Sogi's unwelcome inquiries are going to make it take longer than necessary. Unwelcome inquiries? As a result, I'm losing even more precious time. Currently 2 hours, 55 minutes, and 41 seconds. 42. 43. Then we must resolve everything before 3 hours have passed, Mr. Arahoto. In a miraculous dive in 5 minutes? <laughs> anyway, I can't let the man's obvious bad mood put me off. I need information. Does Prosecutor Sogi believe that Lord Van Seex is the Reaper? I wouldn't know. 
It was ten years ago, in that faithful close trial, that Lord Van Zeeks made a name for himself among the judiciary. But the next trial he fought, he lost. It meant the ringleader of a criminal organization was acquitted, thanks to all the jurors being under duress. But that's awful! The man's freedom was short-lived. He lasted just three days. Yes, let me see. He died in a rock slide at his place of work, I believe. Correct. That was the inauguration of the Reaper of the Barely. So, like, the, the only thing, too, about, like, potentially someone carrying out Asogi's father's legacy, right? Uh, Genshin Asogi's legacy. Is that seemingly all these things, though, like, is there actually an explanation for all of these? Because they really have done a good job at making them all seem like accidents and it's kind of hard to believe that someone would have been able to get away with that for so long and people believe Laura Van Six was responsible he was brought to trial himself but it was shown to have been an accident so he must have had a solid alibi then nevertheless the mysterious deaths continued in total 16 persons perished in unusual circumstances ostensibly at the hand of the reaper that's a long run of coincidences. Well, the Reaper's true identity may, very, may well be revealed by this trial. And the impact that revelation would have on the British public cannot be understated. Is that why it's a close trial? Precisely. This country hasn't seen a close trial for 10 years. So the last one was the professor's the trial of Genshin Asogi. Correct. Actually, we heard that originally you were going to prosecute that trial yourself, Lord Strongheart. Van Zeeks entreated me to relinquish the prosecution to him, that he might avenge his brother's death. And here we are, ten years later. With the son of the man Van Zeeks had condemned, now looking to avenge his father's death in the same way. They do say that what goes around comes around. By they, I mean somebody. However, it would seem that the new young prosecutor is harboring some ulterior motive as well. Cosma is? I like my organization to run smoothly in the exact manner that I prescribe. As with the giant clock in here, I won't tolerate a single cog being out of step with the others. Ah, so that's what all these gears are about in here. If the young man refuses to mesh with the other parts of my great machine, I will be forced to take steps. What? What do you mean? Not something with which you need to concern yourself. In any case, all your questions will be answered tomorrow. In due time. Oh boy, that's not foreboding at all. Now, I shall have to ask you to excuse me. As of this moment, I've been delayed from attending my next meeting by precisely three hours. Oh my, that is a long time. And I hold you entirely responsible. Even though we, mirac we miraculously managed to fit everything into not even five minutes? Come on! You were already well on your way there, dude. Um, I wonder if you might agree to us, um, talking with Prosecutor Sogi. Discussions between the defense and the prosecution outside of the courtroom are generally frowned upon. However, I will make an exception in this case. Now go. You can find him in his office. Oh, thank you. Cool. Kind of surprised let me do that, but all right. Let's go to see him at once, Mr. Narahodo. Cosmo's my best friend in the world. In the whole wide world, I love him so much. Ugh, I'm his little sinner bitch, damn it. But... I'm really not at all sure how I know I know how to talk to him at that at the moment. All right. Sogi, buddy, hey, how's it going? This is my office now. Uh, November second, prosecutor's office. He's over there playing with the dolls. <laughs> hmm, Fanzix is right. These dolls are fun. Ha! Ah! So, this is the office of Prosecutor Sogi now, is it? Cosmosama is doing so well for himself. 
I mean, his boss got arrested, so it's, you know, it's kind of a hand-me-down in not the best fashion, but whatever. Even though he's always forced to kneel on the floor Japanese style in that dark corner. It's his habit to sit Seiza style whenever whenever he works. He's over there. He's got his legs like propped up on the table. Damn, living the good life. Well, looks like our journey here was wasted. Prosecutor appears to be out. I'm taking a prosecutorial duty. Perhaps we should discuss things with another prosecutor we know first. Ah, damn it. Okay, fine. Let's go talk to Van Zeeks. Fine. And then the Sugi will magically appear. Damn it. I swear to God, a Sugi better, be, better not be playing with my dolls. Uh, November 2nd, local prison, cell one. <gasps> There's Iris in her funny little outfit. Lord Van Zeeks is reading. Look. Everybody, look, look, look at him. He's right there. Look, I see him. I do. I see him. I'm looking at him real good. Me too. I'm staring at him too. I swear to God. If I just keep looking at the book, ignoring them, they'll eventually go away, right? Right? And they're still there. Oh, shit. They're still there. They saw me looking. Damn it. He doesn't seem like he wants visitors, does he? He's just like that all the time. We're best pals now, right? Fuck off. The best. But he must have noticed that we're here, surely. Oh, for the... God's sake. What? <laughs> what do you Nipponese want? That's no way to greet the lawyer who's trying his hardest to prove your innocence, is it? Yes, it is. I still hate you. Perhaps not. Huh? Wait, really? Psych. Gotcha. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I've got a sense of humor too. <laughs> I apologize. So, what can I do for you? Mr. Narahodo. Hey, we are making progress. Lord Van Zeeks, speaking earnestly, he has acknowledged your existence, Mr. Narahodo. I know, I heard. Oh my God, Iris. Oh my God, Bruno. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. For God's sake, will you just ask me something already? Oh, the fog will lift over London for the first time in months tomorrow. This does feel very, very strange. I think I've just gotten so used to him shitting on me. I feel, this feels awkward. I must say, I was impressed. Oh, well, thank you. Not by you, by your fellow Nipponese, your prosecutor friend. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's sardonic, don't you think? For a man such as me, so loathing of the Nipponese, to be entirely at the mercy of the two of you. I suppose it's retribution for having played the part of the Reaper all these years. Played the part. Uh, all right, the Reaper's identity. You once told me that you gladly allowed people to believe you were the Reaper because it helped reduce the amount of serious crimes that took place in London. If keeping quiet and playing the part benefits the cause, a cause myself am committed to pursuing, then why would I choose to say anything? But the henchman of a criminal killed by the Reaper attacked you only the other day. And that was just the most recent of many attempts on your life, wasn't it? Someone is clearly profiting from your silence about all this. Someone is using you. Believe me, ever since the Reaper first appeared, I've been doing my utmost to expose him. Or rather, expose the organization. Ah, uh, it's a whole organization? It's inconceivable that all those accidents were orchestrated by one man. Yeah. No, the Reaper always appears to have very accurate information about the accused in each case. Which can only mean that somebody at Scotland Yard is involved. Someone at... You, you can't mean... It's taken me many years, but I finally identified the essential figure in this Reaper organization. Tobias Gregson. What? No! G Gregson? The Reaper? Oh my god, really? So that's why he went to go see him? So, the reason you were investigating Inspector Gregson is because you intended to expose him as the Reaper? As I said, the Reaper of the Bailey is no single person. It's a highly secret organization with close ties to Scotland Yard. But there's no doubt 
that Gregson was a key member of that organization. I... I don't believe it. Are you saying that Gregsy... That he was behind all those awful criminals meeting the... Gregson didn't do the dirty work himself. Oh. He was the tactician. His job was to covertly investigate the marks and plot the assassinations. When Harry found this out... In order to do that without rising, arousing suspicion, he regularly needed a firm alibi. Wow, really? Which is where Mr. Vigil came in, posing as the inspector. Vigil knows nothing of the Reaper, but the room he rents on Fresno Street was almost certainly the headquarters of the operation. Gregson would have met the assassin there for briefings. Wow. Wow, I thought Gregson was looking into this. Not that he was actually a part of it. Like, he was trying to find it out as well. Damn, that's su very surprising. So we don't actually know who carried out the killings then. Actually, I do have a name. You, what? Well, if you can name the man, you have the true identity of the Reaper already then. Or, if I can name the woman... Oh. She's a young woman by the name of Asa Shin. What? What? Asa Shin, so A Shin. That was the real name of Giselle Brett. Right? So you're saying that she's actually the, the person that was assassinating everybody? But I thought, didn't McGundal die? And by that point, she was, wait, no. But no, she was overseas, though. She still wouldn't have been the one to kill him, right? Wait, what? Shin? Yeah. Miss Asa Shin, the true name of a terrifying killer I know only too well. Ah. She came to Japan posing as a visiting student and murdered Dr. John H. Watson. Then just when it seemed that diplomatic protection would... Help her escape Japan and conviction. The mysterious woman was herself murdered in a small summer beach hut. And that woman was actually the Reaper of the Bailey? Snart Rahoto, this perhaps isn't the place to discuss. No. No, of course not. We can't mention it here. The fact that she killed Dr. John H. Watson. Yeah. Because Iris doesn't know. And it's very likely the man was her father. Asa Chin. I should let father know at once. Yes, I agree. How'd you figure that out, Van Zeeks? I don't know, you know, just happened to stumble upon it. I found a post-it note just on my desk one day. I was like, Asa Shin is the Reaper. And I was like, oh, okay. There you go. Prosecutor Sogi. Kazuma, isn't it? Kazuma Sogi. You say he's a friend of yours. My best friend, actually. I thought I was your best friend. You hate me. You're right. I do hate you. Shut up. He's the whole reason I got to come to Britain. It was all in his merits. I have nothing but respect for him. Yes. I understand that only the very best students are selected for such opportunities. And I had a fine demonstration of how sharp he is in the proceedings earlier today. He missed nothing. In fact, his flawless performance very much reminded me of his father. Kitchen Sogi, the professor. It's true that the aristocracy at the time was the root of numerous grave societal problems. They were abusing their power, playing with the common man as pawns in politics, in economics, in war. In many ways, Sogi was carving out a canker from the society that we British couldn't deal with ourselves. Uh, I... I see. But that's precisely why it makes no sense. Clint Van Zix was a noble and upstanding man. He wasn't corrupt. Yeah. Why do the damn Nibbanees have to go and take my brother's life? In spite of having once saved mine. He saved your life? How did that happen? It was ten years ago, on a foggy night. What was to be the professor's final strike had sent a wave of panic through the capital. So Clint Van Zeeks had already been killed at this point then. 
Genshin and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour. Of course, at that point, I had no idea of the true nature of the man at my side. All of a sudden... Uh... Don't make a peep, you're coming with us! Holy shit, look at this badass! Oh shit, we actually get the explanation behind his cross-shaped scar? <gasps> this actually might be it! Maybe. We were surrounded. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scarves. Clint was not only from noble heritage, but he was a brilliant prosecutor as well. The scum of London hated the sight of him, and they had no sympathy for his younger brother either. I've been targeted several times before already. Yes, yeah, Van Zeke's all right. We got him. I could hear them murmuring amongst themselves. I knew they were after me. But just when I thought my time had come. If I let them kill you, Clint would never forgive me. It was Asogi's voice, just a whisper in my ear. Bang! And he cut that bullet right in half. After that, I don't remember exactly what happened. Next thing I, the next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Genshin lay on the cobbled street. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He shielded me. Two days later, they arrested him. On suspicion of being London's most notorious mass murderer ever. The Professor. Hmm. How awful for you. All at once, I lost the brother I revered and the foreign friend I held in such high regard. I'm so sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. Okay, I guess I didn't explain how you got the scar after all. That's the end of my miserable tale. I never thought I'd recount it to anyone. Well, thank you for confiding in me. They probably should have, could have done it before this, you know, before the midpoint of this trial, but you know, whatever. Take what I can get. The Professor, the Reaper, and Inspector Gregson. I wonder just how intimately related they all are. I still can't quite believe that Gregson was essentially the Reaper, giving assassination orders to Giselle Brett. Miss Narahoto, let's go and inform my father. I'm sure our government will want to hear about this new information. Oh, that means I get to meet your daddy, Susie. Hooray! Yes, all right. Let's head back to the Great Waterloo Hotel then. I have reason to be there now. Take me with you, please. It sticks in here. And all they've got is expired magazines to read. I'm so bored. Please, please. All right, Uh, right, let's go back to the prosecutor's room. Or should I? Actually, now let's go talk to his dad or her dad. You gonna be still out here reading the paper? Nope. Uh, November 2nd, Great Waterloo Hotel foyer. I thought it yesterday, and I think it again. This place is so princely. It's a wild guess, but I have a feeling you'll think the same tomorrow, too. <laughs> My tea is a finer fragrance than whatever they're serving in the tea room here, though, wouldn't you say? You better say yes, by the way. Uh, ah, oh, look what we have here. This is an unexpected pleasure. Her dad, or is it? Oh, it is. Okay. I thought it might be the other, the, ju uh, the uh, uh, Japan judge. Ah, oh, father. Oh, is this your daddy, Susie? How lovely. He's got such a pretty little stash. What a charming young lady. And you are. I like your pink hair. Ah, really? So you're the author of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, are you? That's me. Hey, I haven't seen a curtsy from her in, I don't, maybe ever? <laughs> Iris Watson at your service, sir. Susie's been such a wonderful friend to me over the last year, you know. Well, Miss Watson, I must say I read your work regularly and with much, much interest. Iris actually lives with Mr. Holmes, you know, Father. Is that so? Well, perhaps that goes some way to explaining that bright look in your eye. He... Duh. You wouldn't be smiling so airily if you knew just how bright she is, believe me. <laughs> now then, young Naruhodo, it was a pleasure seeing you in action earlier. But damn, Asoki beat your ass. Come on, really, you two? Dude, I'm pretty good. As an invitee of the symposium, I was allowed to observe from the gallery after I twisted some arms. And I must say, it was a truly exemplary performance. Oh, well, thank you very much. 
Although I'm fairly sure you omitted by Kazuma on the end there. No, 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 please don't misunderstand. It was you who impressed me. <laughs> you heard me say that. Really? You didn't miss a step against Asogi, and we all know how capable he is. Really, to have matured into such a fine defense lawyer in less than a year is quite extraordinary. Yeah, all right. It's very kind of you to say. Oh, thank you, I really needed that. And really nice to hear. What I saw in court today confirmed what I'd been hoping for. The favor I mentioned yesterday, Narahodo. I trust you haven't forgotten. Oh, no, you, you did mention something, didn't you? But first, we have something to, something to report, Father. Of course, of course. Shall we take tea while we discuss matters further? This shit is garbage! <laughs> Iris chucks the teapot on the ground. Hmm. Wonder where Judge Jigoku has got, got to. Yeah, seriously, I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, behold! Look at this, Professor Mikatoba. Ah, Cosmo's armband. He was wearing that when he left for Great Britain. How curious. It doesn't strike me at all as odd to see you wearing it. It rather suits you. Oh! Are you intending to return it to him? Well, yes, I mean, it has his name on it. Now that we found out he's alive, it doesn't make sense for me to keep it. Well, if you ask me, I think Cosmo would be delighted to see you wearing it. Well, I feel honored if that were true. Oh, that was nice. The Reaper. Father, do you know about the so-called Reaper of the Bailey? I've heard rumors. Some members of the judiciary explained it all to me yesterday. Of course, when I was visiting a visiting student here in London, the Reaper was yet to emerge. Right. He didn't appear until after that case when the visiting students had already returned home. Lord Van Zeeks, who was in the dock today. That was Brock, the younger brother of Clint Van Zeeks, I believe. That's right. And he's known throughout London as the Reaper, as you've heard. But the truth is, it wasn't him behind all those mysterious deaths. It was somebody else. I see. So what you're saying is, there's been a professional killer at work here. Exactly. Someone by the name of Asa Shin, in fact. I beg your pardon. Did, did you say Asa Shin? You mean that Giselle Breath woman who was responsible for killing my great friend? Oh no, a great friend of yours was killed? Uh-oh. Ah, uh, um, Professor Mikitoba, I think perhaps we shouldn't discuss this right now. Because the friend the professor is talking about is Dr. John H. Watson. And that's not something we want Iris to find out about. Not like this, anyway. <laughs> is there ever gonna be a good time for that shit? Well, hey, let's go ahead and talk about it, by the way. Ah, uh, I've, I've just remembered something. Biscuits, this hotel has the most delicious looking biscuits. That was rather out of the blue. She's doing this deliberately. I think I'll go and see if I can purchase some. I wonder, would you like to come too, Iris? Oh, yes. You just try to leave me behind. <laughs> I thought she'd be like, no, I want to stay and listen to all the dig, the dig shit. Okay, good. So that young girl is called Iris Watson, is she? Yes, that's right. And she's the author of all those adventure stories starring the great detective Holmes. But the name of the credited author isn't Iris, is it? It's Dr. John H. Watson. Yes, I know. That's the name of her father, you see. Her father? Dr. John H. Watson. I was deeply indebted to the man for all the kindness he showed me during my time in London. That's why I was keen to reciprocate and invite him to the Imperial Yume University four years ago. But he was murdered last year by Giselle Brett. Why? Why would the hand of the Reaper stretch all the way to Japan? Iris knows nothing about that case, but it seems very likely the victim, Dr. Watson, was her father. Well, I can't say that we ever spoke about his family, so I don't know if he had a daughter or not. But I think I can say with some certainty that he was never the great detective's partner. So, it could have been doc another Dr. Watson, you think? 
Well, John and Watson are both common names after all. Still, it's probably best not to mention this to the young lady until we can be sure. Interesting. So we, we, we're still not entirely positive. That's what we thought, yes. We're back with cinnamon biscuits. And they're all mine. Oh, they smell delicious, Iris. I think cinnamon will go very well with the tea they serve here. Don't you, Susie? Shit, though it may be. Yes, I'm sure you're right, Iris. That was cute. I liked that. I liked the they distracted. I don't know. The conversations in this, in this, these, this game, these games, these two games have felt so real, so genuine, you know? The fact is, like, even now we're still questioning, well, maybe it's not her father, even though it very likely is. But I like that we even do that, right? We're not like, oh, it's definitely her dad. And we have definitely, uh, concretely, definitively decided here when we really have it. You know, they're actually like, well, I don't know, but I think it's a good thing not to, to talk about in front of her. Uh, Joshi Goku. I haven't seen Joshi Goku for a while, have you? Guilty! Ha <laughs> ha! That guilty is still ringing in my ears. No, now you mention it. I haven't seen him since this morning either. I suppose since the symposium's opening was postponed, he'll have gone to explore at the Great Exhibition. That reminds me of something you mentioned yesterday. About Joshi Goku having once been in the dock himself. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. It was all tied up with that accursed trial. The close trial of Cosmo's father. Seshiro was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took to the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and, um, actually managed to break the witness stand. <laughs> oh my god! Damn, he was still buff as hell back then too, wasn't he? Oh my. He also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. Oh dear. Although it's worryingly easy to imagine him doing that. Well, it was all right in the end. He was acquitted and we returned home to Japan together. Thank goodness. Ah yes, talking of Seshiro. I have a copy of the photograph we all took together here yesterday. Please. Nah. <laughs> Cute. Oh, what a lovely picture. It certainly seems to shout, we've arrived in Britain. What? Why is this showing up in my fucking evidence? My core record, what the fuck? Uh-oh, that's not good. This is seemingly innocuous picture is gonna play into something? None of us had any, any idea what was coming when we took that, did we? What? Is there something I should be paying attention to? The judge's giant buttons. The piece of paper in Mikotoba's hand? Or is that a fan? Is that like his ticket or something? Maybe there's nothing to it. It's just a nice little picture of Naruhodo looking all sweaty. And Susuto, Susuto looking adorable. Maybe something with this, these buttons, huh? Or this thing? Or this guy's face? I don't know. I... Hmm. A photograph taken in the foyer of the Great Waterloo Hotel in the morning of Professor Mikotoba and Joshi Goku's arrival in London for the symposium. Yeah, we similarly also have this, uh, this ticket as well, right? Actually, now I think about it, a piece of this is missing, right? Is that gonna play into something too? What is this gonna be telling us? Mikotoba's been doing some shit? Jigoku's been doing some shit? Uh, none of us had any idea what was coming when we took that, did we? No. No, that's so true. Hmm. The favor. So, you mentioned a favor that you'd like to ask me. Well, this faithful trial that you're fighting, one way or another, it will be over before long. And when it is, I'd like you to accompany me back to Japan. You want me to... to what? But father, what's the meaning of this? Now, Susato, you should understand. You've seen how our courts work firsthand. Japan's judicial system is in its infancy, especially when it's come to defense. Oh, you mean... The Supreme Court of Judicature is in desperate need of a good defense lawyer. As soon as possible. Really quite urgently, urgently in fact. But, but I've not been in London even a year yet! I've read all of Sister's reports. I'm well aware of your extraordinary talents. And of having seen you in action with my own eyes earlier today, there's no question. We need you there so that you may have children, and those children can carry out your legacy also in Japan. 
I mean, Japan, California. That's where we're going, right? You must accompany me to Japan, California. Our true home. No, I don't want to. You must. It is your destiny, Naruto. No! You, Naruto, are precisely the man our country needs. So, you'd be leaving then, Bruno. But then, what am I supposed to do, father? Come to? You came here to serve as Asogi's judicial assistant. Oh, yes. She's supposed to be Cosmo's assistant. Our government is still in the pr process of deciding how best to deal with this situation, though. Oh, but I need my Suzuto! I'm nothing without her! You've always chosen your own path, Suzuto. And I trust your judgment in this matter also. Father! Please, the pair of you don't look so downcast. It's merely a suggestion, you understand. I hope, if I'm honest, but I won't force you. All I ask is that you consider it and come to a decision by the time this trial concludes. Or next trial. Yes, all right. You, you won't leave, will you, Bruno? Aw. How can I say that to that little pudding face? The thought hadn't even crossed my mind. Up until now, I've just been trying to do what I believe to be Cosmo's will. But it turns out that he's still alive. So, where does that leave me? Ooh, interesting. A nice little quandary there. Well, if you'll excuse me now. I need to telegram government ministers and the Japanese police with this information about Asa Shin. Of course, Father. Thank you. I look forward to next month's installment, Miss Watson. Oh, good. And please do come to Baker Street sometime, won't you? I promise I won't blast you with my gun. <laughs> We'd love to entertain you. I would be delighted. The best of luck for tomorrow, Naruto. And give my suggestion your full consideration, won't you? Yes, I will. Going back home. You know, Kazuma-sama has always meant a great deal to my father. I'm sure he loved the chance to meet with him and talk to him about all of this. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Asa Shin. Uh, of course, it's so obvious. Oh, how could I have neglected to consider the possibility before now? Doc! Mr. Holmes! Holmesy, where have you been? I was hiding inside a suitcase, like as, I, as I'm apt to do. Why, I joined you all for tea, of course. What an extraordinary question. I didn't notice you at all. No matter, no matter. Anyway, to more pressing concerns. Mr. Narahodo. Oh, yes? I must dispatch a telegram to your country at once. It's a matter of much urgency. J Japan, you mean? Tell me, to whom can I entrust the task? Quickly now. Who? Uh, well, my father has just now left to send a telegram to the Imperial Police Bureau of Japan himself. I see. Well, he looks reliable enough for a bearded fellow. <laughs> I don't think what father sports could be considered a beard, Mr. Holmes. There's not a moment to lose. Kindly ask your trusty unshaven father to see to see this is sent. I, I will, but what is it? No questions at this time, if you please, Miss Suzuto. All we can do is pray. That for once, my deduction is awry. Doesn't that imply that your deductions are normally correct, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> Which isn't exactly now then! <laughs> you may be surprised to learn that I am a very busy man. I certainly have no time to hide behind settees and eavesdrop on other people's conversations. So that's what joining Fest for Tea meant. <laughs> I'll leave the sending of this in your hands then, my dear fellows. And I'm off! Ha! Ah, wait a minute, Mr. Holmes! And he's off like a ball with gas. He just sort of ran off, didn't he? At quite a pace. And left the unpaid bill for his tea behind too. That son of a bitch. I must catch up with father at the telegraph office. At once. I wonder what the note says. And I'll run and call us a cab straight away. And there was me, thinking everyone would be clamoring to pay Mr. Holmes' bill. 
Uh, it didn't get added. Son of a bitch. Uh, all right, guys. I think this is probably a good place to end things here for now that we're decently far into this. And I just imagine we still have a bit left. I guess so let's go talk to a Sogi. I still got to go talk with uh, uh, Mr. Vigil. I imagine there's going to be at least one or two more things after that as well. I'll be shocked if we go through this whole investigation section. We don't get a, uh, a Holmes great deduction at some point. But interesting. So he seemed to realize something about Giselle Brett. Uh, there at that last moment. Hmm. Mm. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe if you're not already become Piggy Penguin. I'm with the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.